and welcome to another episode of Ubar. In today's episode, we are going to secure a Lambda using API Gateway Cognito User Pool Authorizer. If you want to see more content about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> So this is another video in the API Gateway Security Mechanism playlist and I have created first an explanatory video of the different mechanisms that are around for securing your API and then I have deep into different examples using the authorizers and this is one of them. I have covered the IAM authorizers and the Lambda authorizers already so now it's time for the Cognito user pool authorizers. So in this video, we are going to build a backend using some, we are going to build a Cognito user pool and we are going to build a Cognito client. And then we are going to also put a Lambda behind an API gateway and this API gateway will be secure with the authorizer of Cognito. And in the front end, we are going to build a React app using Amplify that will get a login a user to this uh, Cognito user pool, get the information that needs to validate like the authentication tokens and things like that and then it will call the API gateway with these tokens and try to run the lambda and everything should go fine. So it's a full full stack example. So yeah, let's go to the code and see how it's done. So we already talked about the different authorizers, the request authorizer, the token authorizer, the IAM authorizer. Now is the time for the last of the authorizers, that is the Cognito user pool authorizers. This works in a similar way than the other authorizers, but in this case the authorizer will be using Cognito user pools to give a token to the login user. What this authorizer does is we'll use OAuth to give a token. So either you can create your own UI for this or you can use the Cognito hosted UI that will do all the token uh, processing for you. So the Cognito hosted UI will open in a, another window and you can create user there and also log in. When you log in with the user, when you're redirected back to your uh, React app or any app uh, in any language you want, then you will have some tokens in your storage and you can then use those tokens in your request to API Gateway. The client is logging with a valid user, so that user is a Cognito user pool user and will get an access token for it and then it can do a request to the API Gateway where the token needs to be in the authorization and it will validate that token against the Cognito user pool authorizer. And if everything is okay, then it will continue to the Lambda and execute the Lambda. So let's go to the code and see how this is done. The code is pretty simple and it's just a matter of having some important things in place. So to get started, we are going to use this project, some Cognito auth that we created for the when we work on the authorizer for the IAM permissions. I will leave you the link for the code and also for the IAM permission video in the description box so you can see how this was created. I will just clone this in my computer with a different name and then we are ready to do some modifications and get started. So this project has a backend and a client part and we will need to modify both of them to get the Cognito user pool in place. So let's start with the backend. We are going to start with the package JSON and rename the project to be the API Cognito user pools auth. A very long name, but you can put the name you want. And then I also going to rename the stack and put the bucket name that I want to deploy, I want to use for deploying. Then the scripts stay the same because they are using those variables, so we are fine. Now we can move to the template YAML, the SAM template YAML where or our infrastructure is defined. And we need to define in my API a new authorizer. Here we have the authorizer AWS IAM, and now we are going to start using the Cognito user pool authorizer. 
So we need to define this. We will define the default authorizer, like a new authorizer that I will create. And then we need to add the default authorizer to course preflight, as we did before, because we are going to add course. And if not, if we don't add this line, then the options will get the authorizer and nothing will work. So this is a very important line to get everything working. And then we define the authorizer, but that basically is just pointing to the user pool ARN that we have defined before the bottom. The function doesn't need to change the cognito user pool. We need to change the user pool name to something for this project because we just uh, basically grab an existing project. You can leave the name if you have not deployed this project in your account, but I'll just rename it everywhere to something more specific for this project. This prefix appears in the definition of the client and the many things that we are going to delete in a second. So you can delete first and then change the name if you want. So the Cognito user pool now has a new name and we leave that as it is. Then we have the Cognito pool client. We leave it as it is. We need it. Then we need the pre sign up Lambda. Basically, this will uh, validate our user when we log, uh, create a new user. We leave the role as well in place. Then we can remove the Cognito identity pool because we don't need it. And the roles for the Cognito identity pool because we are not going to use this. So we just remove all those lines of code. And then also we need to remove in the output the Cognito identity pool. The next thing we are going to do is to go to our handler.js and I want to modify the body to return a message um, attribute called authenticate.call. So it, it's a little bit cleaner. And then one thing I need to do in the template YAML is to rename the Cognito user pool to my Cognito user pool because it just has a different name. So I will rename it everywhere that is being used. But you can just uh, rename it in the in the authorizer definition or wherever you you feel like. But so this doesn't fail. As always, you can find this code in GitHub and you will find the link to the code in the description box of this video. Good. Now we have everything we need in the backend. So now we can run a deploy of everything and this will take a while. And when it's done, we will open our AWS console. I will speed this up until we get everything deployed. Now that everything is deployed, we open uh, our AWS console and we go to Cognito. We need to do a couple of modifications there. Uh, according to, to a blog post, this can be done through CloudFormation, but I already have done it manually, so uh, you, can, you can either do it with CloudFormation. I will put the information to the blog post in the, in the, description, blog, in the description box of this video, but you can also do it manually. So basically now we are going to create an uh, integration with uh, OAuth. So we need to put a sign in and sign out URL. I will put the dev endpoints, but when you have deployed this to production or to the cloud, you need to put another callback URLs for the sign in and sign out. And then we are going to allow different OAuth flows and we are going to give some scopes. And the next thing is to find the domain name. This are, is going to be used by the uh, hosted UI. And what I do is I will use exactly the same uh, domain prefix as our API gateway. So we can put anything, but then you need to check that it's available. When you have that in place, now it's time to move to the client. And the first thing we are going to do is install the project. and then we need to update all the libraries that are in the package JSON because this project is using a really old version of Amplify and we will need a newest version of Amplify. Let's speed this up and now we go to the package JSON, we remove the existing library of Amplify and now we can start installing all the new libraries. So 
I will speed this up very fast, but I will leave you in the description box all the libraries that you need to install so you can get this done. And also, if you get this project from GitHub and you just run npm install, you will be able to follow this up. But basically, it's a Amplify API, Amplify PubSub, Amplify Auth, the newer version of AWS Amplify, and then Amplify React. So I speed this up because it takes quite a long time to just install all the different libraries. And I will just list them in the description box for you. After everything is installed, we can open our package JSON and you can see that we have Amplify API, Amplify Auth, Amplify PubSub, a new version of AWS Amplify and AWS Amplify React. So now we are ready to get started. And the first thing we need to do is to configure our application. You will find a config sample and you just copy paste it and create a config JS where you are going to write the whole configuration for this project. We need to add some parameters to the config and remove the identity pool ID. We don't need it anymore. So you can do this step and then copy it. It might make more sense, but it's the same. Here we will add the domain and all the information that we just created in the Cognito page. So I will add that as well in my config.js. And now we are ready to start configuring our application. You will be able to find all the information to fill the config.js from the describe operation of the backend. So if you do npm run describe, you can find the script in the package JSON. If you go there, you can find the describe, and this will describe all your uh, CloudFormation stack. So you will have the um, the API, the region, the Cognito user pool. So everything you need to fill this config.js, you will get it from there. So it makes life easier. So you don't need to jump to the console to, to fill this up. After you finish completing everything that is in the, the describe, then you can start filling up the things that are coming from the Cognito page. And the domain, you get it from the domain definition. You just copy paste it there and then format it correctly. It's important that you remove the HTTPS because it's already added by default when you do the call. So then you need to add the redirect sign in and sign out. And I just put in localhost. Remember, if you are doing this in production, you need to put the real URL and it's to be HTTPS if it's something else on localhost. When you're ready, then you're ready to move on to configure the index.js and there we will load all the new properties into the application. So there is the Amplify config and we have the auth and the uh, API and we are going to remove the identity pool and we are going to add a new attribute called auth and there everything that we should add, the domain, the scope, the redirect and the response time. That will configure our authorization OAuth property with everything for configuring the hosted UI. And then in the API, we need to add it a custom header. And this will uh, add a header to the call when we call the, the endpoint. So it will add the authorization and it will get the token ID from our session. So this will, every time we call this API, will have this header automatically. So we don't need to worry about it later. This is super important for this to work because without this token, the call will never be uh, authenticated. So don't forget to add this. Then after that, we are going to our app.js and we are going to change our navigator. This is uh, was having a login, a logout and sign up button because we were doing everything manually. So now I will replace this with just an open hosted UI calling the method auth federated sign in that basically this just open the hosted UI and takes care of everything. And then I will have the logout there so we can try the functionality. I'm not a front end developer, so you could do this nicer. This is just an example. So you could show one or the other if you are logging or not, but I just put both buttons. And now we can remove uh, the imports that we are not using. 
and we can move to the next file that we need to modify. The next thing I want to do is to remove the login, the sign up files that we don't need them anymore. So I will just go to containers and remove both of these files because we don't need them. And also I will remove the roads so we cannot get into those files. So in the roads.js you will just remove that. This is just to clean up the project. It still works if you don't remove. After that, then I'm going to the home.js and there I will add a method to make sure that something is, somebody is authenticated. So basically I'm calling the auth.current authenticated user. And if there is a an user, it will print it in the console and it will return true. And if not, it will print in the console that is not authenticated and it will return false. And we will use this method when we are calling the API. So the first thing we are going to do is verify if the user is authenticated. If not, then we just uh, don't try to call the API. And it is, we try to call the API. And it's basically the same code that was before. And the last thing we need to do is in the render test API, just return dot message. So we get the specific message and that's it. Now I can uh, do npm start and then we can see if there is any errors. Okay, there is one error. Auth is not defined in home.js. I'm going back, opening home, going to the top of the definitions and I forgot to import that dependency. So I'll just add it. I always forget to import dependencies, so this is something quite typical. I usually wait for the errors. And the same we have in index.js, so let's go to index.js and add the auth as well there. Let's see if now we have everything. Okay, we are missing the AWS SDK, so now we need to install that. So I will install it and then let's try to do npm start again. I will speed the installation up. Good, now we are ready to do npm start and let's see if it works. Let's refresh the page and cross our fingers. It takes a little while, but it's looking good. We can see in the console that the, there is nothing authenticated, so I will open the hosted UI and this will pop up a new uh, window. You can see on the top there is the domain that we define and then there is the redirects uh, with all the information. So this is a URL that is created with all the information that we define in the config.js. So now I'm going to create a new user because this cognito user pool is empty. So I will just create a random user. Test foobar at gmail. This email doesn't exist. I, I don't need that it exists because the Lambda will validate this user for me. So I will just put a password and then I can sign up. And when I sign up, I will get logged in automatically. Because I'm not a front-end developer, if you see the console it says not authenticated, but I just need basically to click again or refresh the page or whatever, and we will see a cognito user. That is the one that I just created. And you will see that the authenticated call appears in the screen. So this is good. We can log out now. And when we log out, then we see that we don't have the not authenticated. And then we can open the hosted UI again and log in with the user that we just created. And then again, because I'm not a front-end developer, I need to refresh this page to get this working. So I will just refresh it. And now you can see that the Cognito user is there and the authentic call, authenticated call is called. So everything is working great. I hope this was so useful for you. Remember, all the code is in GitHub and all the links are in the description box. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. And in the next videos, you're going to see more examples on API Gateway security mechanisms. If there's something you want to see and I have not covered in this season or whatever about serverless in AWS, let me know in the comment box below. I like making content that you want to watch. Around here, there are other videos from my channel that you might be interested in. And if not, I see you next week with another episode of Ciao, ciao!